Greetings, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to The Lady Show, Season 2. That's right, Season 2 is moving right along, and we are so happy that you have joined us again. Thank you so much out there for your support, for all your likes and shares, and in particular, your subscribes. Because when you subscribe, you'll get a notification as to when the next episode of The Ladies is coming, so that you won't miss one show. Today, we're talking about making New Year's resolutions that work. Not the kind that we make them, we might kind of write them down, but two or three months later, we either forgot what they were, we just gave up, they didn't happen fast enough. But we know that New Year's resolutions are something that have become a tradition. And they are when we make promises or we kind of decide what we want the year to look like, what we'd like to achieve, what we might want to live like, personal goals, professional goals, it doesn't matter. So today we're going to look at and examine some alternative ways that we can set those goals for ourselves with a better chance of making them stick. I want to introduce to you today my co-hosts, Talia, welcome back, and Zandria. Hello. And our special guest, Minister Fitz Houston. He is the founder and senior minister of Faith, Hope, Help World Ministries. And he's going to be giving us some very interesting spiritual alternatives to the normally traditional New Year's uh, resolutions that we make. So first, let's talk about what resolutions are. Resolutions are promises that we mm -hmm. make, goals that we set, things we think we want to do, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With all the intentions in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, we'll get into that. <laughs> but where did they originate? You might be interested to know that the Babylonians, 4,000 years B.C., started recorded, written down New Year's resolutions. And the two things that they resolved to do was whoever they owed a debt to, they would pay it back in full. If they had borrowed anything from anyone, they would give that item back. And they also resolved to renew their allegiance to the king. And this is all recorded in the records that were kept by the scribes that kept track of their history. So later on, our calendar was changed by Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. He made January 1st the first day of the year. And that's why we have it. So everything we do about time and about our calendar is based on the Roman calendar. And we have that today, right now. If you fast forward, you find that in the Christian community, we have things like watch night service. Mm -hmm. We have consecration, fasting. Some of our churches that we may belong to might be involved in those things right now. But we're going to look at some different things today, and I think it's going to hopefully be interesting and fun. Let's start with this question. What was the first New Year's resolution that you ever made? Mm. Why did you make it? And did you keep it? Italia. Hmm. Well, my first New Year's resolution was actually starting my master's. Oh. And it started in January. And I did keep it. And mm. I did complete the program. And it was my first New Year's resolution ever. I decided, like, I'm going to really try to do this for myself because I didn't want to do anything else that I felt was a strain. So, mm. um, yeah, I did complete my mm -hmm. master's in more than a year. But mm -hmm. I knew in November, I was like, the year before, I was like, I'm going to go back to school, <laughs> and I'm going to start in January. <laughs> and then New Year's came, and I was like, I start school in three days. Wow. I'm really going to go ahead and do it because they already took the money out the account. So mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. my first New Year's resolution was. Wow. Good for you. Congratulations oh, to you. Oh, yes. my goodness. That's amazing. Miss Andrea. And I cannot think of my first, because I do it every year. I'm a serial... Um, New Year's resolutioner, <laughs> I guess you could say so. I don't even know what my first one was. I can imagine, though, it probably had to do with weight loss, like many others. Um, I had both my children were 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, I gained 70 pounds with both my children. I was living my best life and pregnant. And I remember thinking, like, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back in shape after each baby. So I'm sure it had to do with, I'm sure it had to do with weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going to 24-Hour Fitness. 
paying them a million dollars and um, getting a trainer and set it all up. And I've had my membership for eight years. So I have continued mm-hmm. to keep that up, mm-hmm. um, try to work out at least three days a week. And so I'm pretty sure that was probably one of the biggest um, commitments that I did as far as the New Year's resolution. But I have them every year. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Minister Fitz, I'm curious. I'm guilty. Okay. I'm the one that has many resolutions that never came to pass for one reason. I looked at them as a wish list and not a things to do list. Uh, until I got much older. Uh, I wrote them down. I wrote them, oh, yeah, this sounds good. Yeah. I couldn't tell you where it was 12 months later. I had no idea where they were. Mm-hmm. But I had resolutions throughout the year, but they never went with New Year's resolutions. Because for my, my mindset was that, oh, this is a wish list. Yeah. Sounds good. And then I didn't really follow through because I didn't look at it as a to-do list. Mm-hmm. But my goals were always followed. But never the New Year's resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> I did that too. And I also do a vision board. Mm-hmm. And every time I do a vision board, it all comes true. Yeah. It's so powerful mm-hmm. when you do a vision board and you put it out there. So yeah, the New Year's mm-hmm. resolutions. Hey. <laughs> um, but my vision boards, once I see okay. that and I put it somewhere, mm-hmm. it's amazing. And I, I do it, I try to do it with my kids too every year. Mm-hmm. So before mm-hmm. the first, I try yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. I would say for me, what I used to do a lot is on New Year's Eve, I would write down a list of just all the things I wanted to do mm-hmm. in the year that followed. And then the next New Year's Eve, I'd look at that list to see how many of them I was able to accomplish and I'd strike those off. Mm-hmm. And whatever was left, that started the list for the following year. Oh, nice. A couple of okay. them might repeat, but it would, it would start the list for the following year. And my goal was always to do as much of the list as I could, to do as much of the list as I could until I came to a year where I did the whole list. Wow. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah, that I haven't amazing. got there yet. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> haven't got there yet. But, but this year I also did add a, add a vision board. Yeah. Um, to yeah. what I'm going to do. And um, one of the classes I was taking, they suggested that and suggested that it be in front of you wherever you mm-hmm. go in the room right. mm-hmm. so that you can always look at it and see it and say, oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm supposed to be about. Exactly. That's where you're supposed to go. Did anyone ever have a resolution that you made that just didn't work out in kind of a weird or crazy way or something that you didn't expect? Hmm. You know what? what? Um, I know one time I made a resolution um, to get up at 5 a.m. before my kids so I could have some time just to get my thoughts together before they got up. And I did. I actually did it for a while, and then I just fell off. It just mm-hmm. fell off. But while I was doing it, I felt amazing to be able to just have that moment and meditate and study and read the Word or read a, an amazing book or whatever it was that morning and just be recharged before they got up. And every time I think about it, I'm like, why am I not doing that? So, yeah, I definitely started. Mm-hmm. And I probably did it for a good six months, six to seven months. Mm-hmm. And then just one morning, I was like, maybe not. So hit the alarm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's very tough. I think for me, I, I did one a long time ago. Now, this was back in my dating days. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to start going on dates, you know, because mm-hmm. I wouldn't date because I was in school and I just had my children. I didn't have time to. And I went on a date because it was part of my, you know, New Year's resolution. I'm like, I'm going to do a date at least once a month, a month. And the date was just sour. And I didn't even want to put no work into um, going to date anybody. So, yeah, it kind of ended crazy. He was a little weird. Okay. And um, we went to the movies, and he took his shoes off. I'm not sure why he did that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it just killed the whole dating vibe for me. So, yeah. That, so, New Year's resolution was for me to date, but it stopped because of that whole incident. And oh, I just, no. Still, I'm still traumatized. <laughs> date somebody else. Date the somebody else. else. Yes. <laughs> Ew, the movie theater flow. <laughs> That's my stomach hurts. We'll have to detail about that later, but yes. Yes. So, Minister Fitz, you said that you had not made a distinction between the wish list Mm -hmm. and the to-do list. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What on your to-do list? What would you say your most successful resolution was? Well, I've always been a fitness nut, and when the epiphany hit me that I was doing a wish list and not a things to do list. I said, wait a minute, I'm not getting anything accomplished because I'm not taking this serious. So I always had a high fitness goals. 
And so I had this one idol, I always wanted to accomplish this. And so I realized how much work it really took to accomplish the person. I said, wait a minute, this is not just wish list. You got to work yeah, to get this goal. Right. And so that woke me up. I said, wait a minute, if you want to accomplish some of these things you want to put on your wish list, you got to really hone down and get serious. And, and that's, that epiphany kind of hit me, it made me understand the difference of a, a wish list revolution versus one that you really want to accomplish something during the year. Mm -hmm. So the, the fitness area is where it really helped me to just set goals at a time, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. When you set a goal, you really mm -hmm. seek to up, uh, achieve it. Yeah, that's true, because I think sometimes, I, I know for me, I went through a period where anything that I didn't achieve was a failure. Mm. And until I was reading this book in, in which the author made a statement, they said the most successful people fail many times. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Right. They just don't quit. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. So that kind of turned it around and it also helped me in terms of what I put on what I put on the um the uh the wish list or the the list that um I'm making for the year to, to make it something that's that's doable. Mm -hmm either in a short space of time or a long space of time. Mm -hmm. um, and also, if you don't make it or you just get this close, the mm -hmm. fact that you kept going yeah, towards it. definitely. Because right. it took effort just to get just there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why I started changing and saying, okay, whatever I didn't accomplish on the list right here, I'll just start the next year mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. at the top of the list. Because at least I put some time in it. I yeah, mean, definitely. Right? That's right. why it's so good. A lot of people who have succeeded make that point. Right. But mm -hmm. I failed a lot before I got to this point. Mm -hmm. right. Because sometimes we feel that failure is giving up. But right. you learn from your mistakes and you come back each time you make a mistake, that's one less mistake you'll make in the future until you exactly. have no mistakes. Right. 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 Exactly. And I always right. like to think of instead of failing backwards, I always feel like I fell forward. Mm -hmm. right? right? Because you're moving forward, you're learning from your mistake, mm -hmm. and you're not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. And then you just become stronger. So you know mm -hmm. what not to do. Yeah. yeah. When you think back on the resolutions that you've made, is there one that you think feel was most successful for you um for me again going back to my kids clearly i'm a mom um yes, i did i wanted to have a natural birth with both my children mm -hmm. um those were amazing goals and resolutions that i made and i had a lot of support um from my family i had some family that wasn't supportive and thought i was crazy um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big baby when it comes to pain. My pain tolerance is that from like a zero to a 10, it's like a negative zero. <laughs> so my mom was like, okay, honey, that's, that's not really, that's, that's good. I got your back and I'll be there and you go ahead and do that. So it was like, we got you, but okay. But I did it. And, and it was an amazing feeling, and I was like, okay, if I could do that, I could do anything. Mm -hmm. My son, my first child, um, Devon, was 9'9", nine, 9 nine pounds, 9 ounces, 20 inches. My daughter was 9 pounds, 12 ounces, and 12.5, um, I mean, 21.5. So I, I had huge babies, and her actually ended up having at home in my living room with my midwife, so it was amazing. They so, were grown-ups at birth. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, you didn't have babies, you had toddlers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just saying setting that goal and that resolution and doing that I was like okay I could do anything after that I could do anything <laughs> good for you well you know we promised you some alternatives yeah. to the normal New Year's resolution some of which we've been talking about right here so we're going to take a little break right now and we'll be back very shortly but while we're gone make sure to like and share and also subscribe to the show we appreciate all the support of our audience out there and we'll be back in just a moment stay tuned don't go away we have a hot topic that's burning up the charts right now with women in politics for me as an immigrant woman you know it's a really, really important time because most of us come from countries where women haven't had that kind of power. And even if they have it, it's perceived. We truly now have like a rainbow coalition of women from everywhere, from the eldest to the youngest. And, and what I saw also is that, yeah, I think in times past, women didn't support each other. You know, I mean, like if we're still, if the United States is still dealing with the first female governor, and we have other countries like Liberia and other countries and the Philippines that have had female presidents. Do you think that the current uh, 
tone and tenor of the current administration had any impact on the number of immigrant women that actually said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run for office and I'm going to do this? Oh, how can we deny that? Hi, everybody. I'm Jonna, and this is The Lady Show. Welcome back. We're here with segment two. Today, we're talking about making New Year's resolutions that work. Not the ones that kind of fade, but the ones that are going to be lasting and the ones that are going to put a smile on our face at the end of the year when we look back upon them. So in this segment, I'd first like to introduce to you again, Talia, my co-host, and also my co-host, Andrea, and our special guest, Minister Fitz Houston. He is the founder of Faith, Hope, Help World Ministries. And in this segment, we're going to explore something a little different and, and kind of fun. And the question is... If you don't like making New Year's resolutions, just don't, you've had enough of that stuff, right? Then here are examples of what you might choose instead. I found this on a really, really great website. Um, it was written by a lady who has actually studied our behavior and how we manage our lives. And she came up with a couple of examples that I found really, really interesting. The first one says, create a bucket list for the year. Or... Follow a monthly 30-day challenge. Take on a 365-day project. Choose one word for the year. Identify your people. Give yourself a yearly challenge. And give yourself the year off. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sandria, which one did you choose? So for me, I love the 30-day challenge. Mm -hmm. I can definitely <laughs> be focused on something for 30 days. I like that because you know from the first, so depending on how many months are in the month, how many days that you have to focus on that one thing. So I love that. I'm like going to implement that next week, starting February 1st. So I love that. I think that's great. Do you have anything in particular you're going to put in that spot? Yes. I'm going to actually implement... Um, two work days. Right now I only do one work day towards my independent com mm -hmm. company and now I'm going to dedicate two days instead of just one day. Mm -hmm. It kind of happens throughout the week but I like to have one day where that's all I do all day um, which is usually Monday but I think I'm going to do it Monday and Tuesday now. So I'm going to do that for 30 days and see what that brings about as far as my business. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like oh. at the end of that 30 days, do you have a target or do you have something yes. specific you, you hope to have accomplished? Um, yes, years? I want to definitely retain more clients and I definitely want to make sure that I'm following up with all my leads, mm -hmm. solidifying all my events, and of course bringing a new business. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. Minister Fitz. For me, it was picking a, a word. Mm -hmm. That was motivating since I had the problem I told you about before. Yes. So, <laughs> wish I, uh, list. And then they created a new monster. Once it went from a wish list to a things to do list, mm -hmm. now I had all these things. I gotta get this done. So I picked the word driven. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, to get this done, you've gotta be driven to accomplish it. That's right. And just write, if I see the word written in different places, and I feel I'm being lazy, are you being driven today? No, you've been lazy today. <laughs> so that would actually help me stay on task. Something on that list needs to be done every day. Not, not all of it. That drove me crazy too. Yeah. But something on that list needs to be worked on every day. Mm -hmm. That makes sure I was always moving forward. Mm -hmm. so that helped me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's definitely. a good word. Mm -hmm. Miss Talia. Oh, you know what? I would say you're taking a year off. Mm -hmm. Because um, as an entrepreneur... As someone that just graduated, a full-time mom, I feel personally, you know, New Year's resolution gives a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. you know, the pressure mm -hmm. of starting something, the pressure of just getting something done, and then this is just a one more task that's added to my daily mm -hmm. life. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say for my New Year's resolution, taking the year off and just accepting me for who I am, mm -hmm. no extra expectations, and just going with the flow. So mm -hmm. I think that's the best for some people because I don't like the pressure of feeling like I have to do something mm -hmm. and then I have to feel the pressure of a life. I don't do it. You know, yeah. I just take the year off. Just yeah. Nice. No. Just do yeah. nothing, do just, you, just, right? <laughs> listen, because, and I say that because, you know, most people lose their momentum mm -hmm. after the second. 
So, <laughs> so you know, that's, that's, that's true. true. That's, that's, true. True. that's, that's like the gym. That's like the gym. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it never fails. And I think it's so cool because I know everybody's motivated. Right. The first hit, man, they're, they're in there, you know. Yep. It's like they're in there, the second, the third, and it's like the classes are packed. Right. It's like never packed, it's packed to capacity. You gotta get there early. And then about the third, they kinda drop off. Yeah. Then the fourth, shoot, yeah. by the eighth, it's back to normal. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so, just dropped yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I think the one I, I would wanna do, because I'm, I'm usually a social individual, but I have found that when you work at home, Mm. You got that cabin fever going on. You don't get out as often as you would. There's more reasons to say, no, I can't come, than, yeah, I'll be there. Mm. Okay. And so the one that says, identify your people, mm. take five to ten people that you like them, they like you. They bring out the best in you. Mm -hmm. You love being around them. Anything mm -hmm. you do is always going to be fun and interesting. And then make it a point to schedule and set up ways to regularly interact with them. I love that. Getting like together that for dinner, yeah. Manny Petty yeah. uh, appointments. Um, if, get, get, get the ones who know each other together in a group and mm -hmm. go to your favorite place for an overnight doing mm -hmm. something, whatever, just so that you're constantly mm -hmm. reaching outside the house or outside the office to make sure that you stay connected to those people. And that they know how important and how special they are oh, to you and that. what an important part of your life, you know, yeah. they are constantly becoming. So that's that's the one that, that I really looked at first. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to do the year off. Mm -hmm. Because we just don't take breaks. Right. Oh my god. For ourselves. Oh, absolutely. So true. Everything you yeah. know, we don't we don't think about, well, yeah, there, if I decide that I just want to binge and not do anything today, it, who, is it going to hurt anybody? Right. I just know what I've got to do tomorrow yeah. <laughs> when the sun yeah. comes up again, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else on, on our list of, of choice alternatives that, that kind of caught you? Oh. I love the create a bucket list for the year, beginning with your birthday month, which my birthday is tomorrow. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I was like, I got to get on that tonight. <laughs> um, I like that. Make a list of things you want to do before your next birthday, which gives me a whole year. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I'm definitely going to work on that tonight. I have no idea what it's going to be, um, but I definitely want to get my list together tonight before my birthday. So I like that. I think that's special. Um, instead of the January 1st, your birthday. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like I like that better. Because mm -hmm. your January 1st, you remember. But mm -hmm. your birthday, you never forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's motivating. Right. It is. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's, it's your, your own date. It's your, it's it's your, your own holiday. holiday. That's yeah, yours. that's right. your only day. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. It's the only yeah. holiday that's mm -hmm. your own. Right. So it'll motivate me. Like, okay, I said I was going to have this done by January 28th next year. So I need to get on it. Right. Yeah. Right. So if we say really? birthdays of January first, we'll be able to stick to our New Year's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Right. Probably. The birthday resolution is no problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. New Year's resolution. Right. I know. And it's not funny. Sometimes it's just those little hiccups in your mind right. that it can make all the difference. You got just got to find those tweaks. Yeah. Charlie, yeah. what are you thinking? I'm thinking. I'm thinking the take on a 365 day project. Um, mm -hmm. If I had, you know, like for me, I want to be able to wake up or even go to bed at a certain time because mm -hmm. I know I will go until three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and I'll sleep and get back up again. But really just having a shut off time. Yeah. yeah. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. I just wish that my house would just shut down at 10 where, you know, I'm got to get in bed now. Versus, <laughs> you know, but I think that's for me, that would be a project to really stay committed mm -hmm. Um, despite I would want to take time off, but just doing one small task to say, okay, you know what? You need to start shutting down at 11 mm -hmm. o'clock. No more phone calls, mm -hmm. no no answering calls at the, in the middle of the night because I get them as an entrepreneur. So just mm -hmm. taking on a small project, personal project mm -hmm. that's for yourself um, and, and doing something similar to that. Yeah, that's the problem with, if you use a word to motivate you, you can get too driven, in my, in my case, the word I picked can be the, the bane of my existence because now I'm so driven, I don't shut down. Right. And now you find yourself right. overworking mm -hmm. and you have to find a balance right. or else you'll be falling out and exhausted because you stay mm -hmm. motivated but mm -hmm. you don't know when to shut down. That's right. 
the goals. Mm-hmm. The, the goals will drive you instead of you driving the goals. Oh my gosh, right. that's so true. And I love the bedtime because yeah. I'm crazy about my bed. My husband's like, really, babe? It's eight oh five. I was like, bedtime is eight o'clock. Like, <laughs> I just need the house to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Have a couple hours for myself to just do whatever or completely nothing. And then mm-hmm. that's how I ease into my bedtime, which is 11 mm-hmm. o'clock when he said that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my husband's like, babe, it's 8.05. My kids are like, ah, mom's that's here, true. running up the stairs. Yeah, yeah like, I need you guys true. to be in the bed. That's and they they are different. If they don't go to bed on time in the morning, I pay for it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, the that's attitude. True. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. tired. They're off balance. They're used to bedtime. So I've always been really strict with a bedtime mm-hmm. for my kids. That sounds like a good idea because, you know, we're up really early and I just kind of fall into sleep. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a time at night where I kind of shut things down, turn things off. Mm-hmm. And it does affect you the next day when I don't get that siesta in the, in the middle of the afternoon. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's constantly reminding me and then I go yeah but I got it yeah but I got it so mm-hmm. I would choose the one word one right and my one word would be simplify mm-hmm. oh. yes. because yes. when you're constantly multitasking when you're constantly got too much stuff stacked up when you're constantly saying but I didn't do this but I got to call this but I got to and and to, to slow down and to make yourself or ask yourself do you have a scheduled day that's simple today? Right. right. Or is it going to be insanity? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. how can you just kind of kind of break that down and kind of make it smaller? Mm-hmm. And whatever you don't finish today, you can do what? Okay. You can start tomorrow. That's right. right. You can start tomorrow yes. with that. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a little break right now. And um, as you can tell, all this talking about New Year's resolutions has made us very thirsty. <laughs> so we're going to refill our cups. And while we're doing that... Like, share, subscribe. Make sure that you do that so that you can receive notifications as to when the next episode of The Lady Show is going to be coming on. So we'll be right back, and we hope that you'll be back to join us as well. Welcome to our show, The Ladies. The goal of this talk show is to bring to light and discuss issues in the news from four different perspectives. We strive to create a consistent, high-quality show that relates entertains, engages, and builds an honest, transparent relationship with our viewers. We hope that by watching this unique show, you feel uplifted, enlightened, encouraged, and entertained. Our mission is to use the airwaves to bring to life engaging topics, transform our viewers' lives, and bring a sense of fulfillment into every home. Thank you for watching the ladies and welcome to the family of four ladies with four different opinions. Greetings, welcome back to The Ladies Show. We're happy to have you here with us today and I'm joined today by my co-host Talia. Hi Talia. Hey. And Zandria. Hey. And our special guest minister Fitz Houston. He is the founder of Faith Hope Help World Ministries. He is an ordained and licensed minister, and he also holds a doctorate of divinity from the Saints of Value Training Center in Downey, California. And he also has a YouTube channel. So he'll be talking a little bit about that as as some of the alternatives um, that he's going to share with us uh, come into the discussion. So, Minister Fitz, why don't you first start out with something that people do a lot during their transition into a new year or whenever they want to make a change in their life, and that is fasting. If you could share with us the difference between alternatives to fasting and the traditional fasting that we might be more familiar with. Okay, we always hear about, like we've been talking about, the fasting for physical uh, purposes, uh, abstaining, willfully abstaining from food and drink, not not making yourself, but willfully saying, you know, I want to fast, I'm going to cut back on this Mm -hmm. food or drink for a certain period of time, which is the general definition that when a lot of people bring together the regular term of fasting and biblical fasting, which also includes prayer, a lot of people don't really understand. They just hear the word fasting and they think they're both the same. Mm-hmm. But when you hear the term fasting, most people are taking care of their physicality and losing weight or whatever they want to shoot for as a goal. When you bring the term biblical fasting into play, which is just usually said fasting, a lot of people say fasting and praying. Mm-hmm so that you understand the difference between the two. So what happens is when you bring the two together while you're abstaining from eating certain foods and you try to get your physicality together, during that time when you usually are going crazy, oh, I gotta, I gotta eat, I gotta eat, 
Well, when you're not doing the prayer with it, you're going crazy. Well, I got to eat. I got to eat. But when you think about the purpose of biblical fasting, when your body is going through that struggle, mm -hmm. you're trying to say, well, I could be praying in this time to help me be strong mm -hmm. to get through this period of time mm -hmm. that I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. So as a result, during the same period of time, whatever the length you choose, uh, you get a, a closer spiritual walk if you're putting your body through submission, but your spiritual side is getting fed as well and you're getting stronger. And sometimes what, what we, with our ministry, we actually incorporate with that what behavior could I improve? Because since I'm working on my, my, my physical self mm -hmm. and my spiritual self, is that behavior I need to put in on this list too? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you think, you know what, I need to, I, could, I, I, I have a quick temper. Maybe I need to work on that. Let me, let me see if I can, for 30 days, not lose my temper. Mm -hmm. And if you can do something for 30 days, mm -hmm. you actually have created a new habit. Mm -hmm. And when the end of the fast comes, your body's been benefited. Your spirit's been fitted, and sometimes your behavior, right. you've changed because you actually included the all of it together. And the reason why the churches do it at the top of the year, what better way to do it? That helps solve my problem because <laughs> my, I could never do anything at the top of the year. So a lot of churches start, start your year off with it because in a way you're starting the year off right physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. and behaviorally if you want to put that in there as well. Right. And so sometimes at, at the end of it all, you should be a better person all around. Mm -hmm. And then don't go back to who you were before you start. <laughs> at the end of the day, people always have to go, what do I do at day 31? You keep what you just did. You worked so hard to get yeah. to day 30. Mm -hmm. Why go back to who you were before? Right, right. Now you've got a whole new level of no focus. Your discipline, your spirituality is stronger. All this is stronger. Just keep walking that. Right. Mm -hmm. And make it even more focused next year. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how people can use benefit not just think about just the physicality, right. but you can use it in many, I've heard people do it with smoking, with trying to get, um, break the alcoholism, I mean, all Sleep. types of, you know, yeah. any, yeah. any behavior, anything can be applied mm -hmm. when you're using it during that same day period. Yeah. Minister Fitz, you um, shared with me that you have a special kind of consecration going on with your fellowship that you, that mm -hmm. you teach with every day. What are some of the things that they are Fasting from <laughs> well, well, and see, lot of, lot of, that we might not think about when well, we're a lot of times about that. churches don't really bring in the what behavior can you fix about yourself that right. people say you know I can improve myself right. in this area because mm -hmm. a lot of, most churches always talk about we pray and fast and we're reading scriptures each day mm -hmm. to keep the spirituality but a lot of people don't think about when I added this particular year I say well think about what in your behavior can you improve about yourself. And then just write down what you think you can prove. One person said, I, I just lose it. I curse too much. Or I, need, I cut cigarettes. Or alcohol. Or I lose my temper. And it was amazing how many people had something to say that they mm -hmm. need to fix. Mm -hmm. I said, well, put that on the list too. Mm -hmm. So that while you're working through physicality and your spiritual side, mm -hmm. then you're being a better person about, about that. Whatever that thing is, <laughs> especially if, if you, say, you say you're a Christian, people say, well, I thought you were a Christian. You just cussed me out. <laughs> Uh, no, I need to I need to get control of this. I need to put it on my fasting list right now. I need to walk what I'm talking. Right. And so that's how it can work in many, many ways when you put all three together. I like that. Yeah. I've never heard the behavior. I like that. that. Yeah. I personally fast every Monday, mm -hmm. um, so I just have water only. I heard from an uh, amazing young writer named Josiah Madden, and I I thought. That's crazy. I'm not going to fast. Why am I going to fast? I love food. So I was like, um, yeah, no. So I thought, I thought, well, and then I went home. It was a seminar on the weekend. I went home and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it. And I didn't realize how much food had control over me because mm -hmm. I do, I do love food, but it really controlled me. Like you said, you're mm -hmm. thinking about what am I going to eat next? What am I going to eat? So of course, the first time I, I totally, I did it. But I laid, I, I like laid down the whole day. My husband's like, so that's not gonna work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> life is still going on. The kids are like, Mama, you okay? I'm fine. I'm just not eating. I wasn't in the best mood. Right. Um, also, when you're fasting, you're detoxing. Yes. I had major headaches. Yes. Um, yes. Obviously, I needed some stuff to come out of my mm. system and didn't realize mm. it. And that's a natural, easy way to detox and fast. Mm -hmm. It definitely puts your spirit mm -hmm. in check real quick. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never done the behavior. So yeah. I like that. I'm going to incorporate that yeah, in my 30 day people, challenge. Yeah, people have so benefit with <laughs> yes, that. Yes, I, uh, I really like that. Because a lot of times you think about when you're trying to change anything about yourself. Mm -hmm. and, you, you, and it just kind of hit me because all the, all the challenges I told you before about my duties and resolutions. Right. I said, wait a minute. 
all these things are, we're focusing on improving ourselves in fasting and praying. So that's when all of a sudden this mm-hmm. idea about well, include something that you can improve about yourself. I love that. I love, I love what you said though about <laughs> or what the thought you said. You said something that made me think when um when you're trying to stick with it and and you feel like you're about to lose it. Mm-hmm. And and that's the choice. You gotta make sure if you're working a hard job you mm-hmm. got to make sure you pick the right fast. Oh, yeah. Right. Because if you have a very energetic job, oh, yeah. fasting, you will pass out. Oh, right. no, you can't. Right. And a lot of times yeah, the fasting yeah, the bishop says, you know what? Well, make sure you just look at Now, if you're diabetic, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. be sure you're paying oh, attention yeah, to what you can do. Right, right. I don't want to do a 38 day fast, just water. Oh, uh, if you were in a busy job, you would not make it. No, no, what no, we call it no. nine one one, right, and you'd be right. in the hospital. Yeah, an alternate it could be juice fasting. Right, right. yeah, right. 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 which is amazing. Which is amazing. Right. What it is? Exactly. You know, I have people putting social media on the list. Mm-hmm. Right. I spent too much time. I spent eight hours That's doing right. this. I gotta fast on social media. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what? That yeah. makes you better because how much time are you wasting? That's, That's right. right. That's that right. was me. I know that this year I've completely calmed down. Mm-hmm. on social media because I had to do it for work and mm-hmm. it was very draining mm-hmm. so now that I ne- don't necessarily have to do it for work I don't want to do it at all so my <laughs> peers are like you're not on social media I'm like just the thought of having to go and post and mm-hmm. it's very very draining mm-hmm. but going back to what you said about um, feeding yourself while you're praying I know the first time I did a fast I thought I was going to slap somebody <laughs> <laughs> I was like I don't like you because <laughs> <laughs> um, I was so hungry but like yeah, you, know, you, get a, you get a yeah. he- you get a headache Ooh. but I did learn my brother told me my little brother a very young brother told me that if you can sustain from food and water mm-hmm. You can withhold anything in life because those are the so core true. essential things to keep you alive. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you are hungry, you can do prayer in addition to feeding yourself with good words. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. you're hungry, open up a book, read. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn. Yes. I mean, yeah. After yes. The, the pains right. and the cravings. Right. And right. After this with withdrawal. Yeah, of course. Because you got so much sugar in the diet. Oh my gosh, yeah. Coffee and all this stuff. And Everything. once those first three days of with no sugar, no coffee, oh, yeah. you're like coming off your back. Right. 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 You really are. And, and, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, right. Mondays are my most, which is my business catch up day because I'm so focused. I'm mm-hmm. not worried about um, food. I drop the kids off. I might go for just a short, you know, casual walk. I get my tea ready for the day because I'll do like something warm in my belly. Um, but it's just tea with nothing in it, it's just water. And I'm focused. My to-do list is always completed. I catch mm-hmm. up on everything. It's like I have laser focus. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. My sense is heightened. That's right. Um, yes. So around dinner time, right. I do go yes. upstairs mm-hmm. um, because by the end of the day, I am I am right. ready. You know, like right. my body's like we're ready now. Exactly. Um, I go upstairs and have my nice nice tea. Mm-hmm. I do turn in early. Mm-hmm. I try to keep that day a little more. Um, Stress free, mm-hmm. maybe not um, pick up assignments and just catch up on life in general, or even just a time out for myself right, um, right. and just spiritually connect with myself mm-hmm. and just count that day you out. You need that. Yeah. yeah. The, day, the world is so chaotic. It is. That's true. And I look forward That's to that true. day. Let yeah. me ask you all something. Talking about abstaining from um, activities, including social media, video games, sports on the television. Phone chat, gossiping, online shopping, <laughs> all those good things. <laughs> now, guilty. <laughs> what would be the most difficult for you to give up for thirty days or longer? Shopping for me. I'm gonna just keep it one hundred. No, <laughs> for me, for me, giving up shopping for thirty days would really be a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Probably just as tough as food for me. So that would be a number one thing I would have to challenge myself to do. My husband would be very happy. So so if, <laughs> so if we go back to um, segment two where we were talking about those different mm-hmm. kinds of resolutions, yeah, you could probably possibly plug shopping. Oh yeah. To the oh, yeah. Day one. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And reset and reset. Like he said, mm-hmm. just reset because I mean I'm a bargain shopper, so I'm like well, it's $5.99. I mean, it's come home with me, but there's $5.99 everywhere. And I always tell my husband, my husband's like, oh, with 75% off, guess how much you would have saved had you kept walking? You know, yeah. and I'm like, oh, well, that's right. not, that's right. right. I wouldn't have come home if right. I did that. Right. But yeah, so I'm a bargain shopper. So I see like, a $10 sale, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, I can get this for someone for Christmas, or, mm-hmm. but it's like, no, what if I just shut 
all of that down. I think my husband would take my temperature. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For, for sure. sure. For sure. <laughs> let's do this. We're going to wrap up a little bit here. I want, let's share with the audience just in a summary. Mm -hmm. What do you take away from the conversation that we've had today? What would you like to share with the audience about what we have I would like. Today. I would. I would. I'm excited about the 30 day challenge, mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited about um, the one year challenge according to my birthday, and not January first. Yes. <laughs> For yes. some reason, I'm, I'm like that. I could do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so I'm excited about that um, and implementing what things I'm going to do, like making my business days mm -hmm. on Monday and Tuesday. Um, Maybe fasting from shopping <laughs> um, and trying to see what other things I can come up with. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you say, Tony? I would say, you know, be yourself. Don't have the pressures of fulfilling something that you know that is impossible. Have realistic expectations. Are you talking about me? Yes. Expectations. You know, do something that's feasible. Do something that's within your um, realm of your circle of control. Yeah. Um, don't mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm gonna try to lose a hundred pounds when you know that's really not feasible. But mm -hmm. if you do, if you do want to conquer a New Year's resolution, make sure it's low pressure and that's something that's obtainable and realistic yeah, so that's, that's my one. takeaway that's a good one. I would say compartmentalize your time because you can co constantly try to do too much at the same time mm -hmm. and not accomplish anything because mm -hmm. you spread yourself too thin mm -hmm. so make yourself just take the time today I'm working on this tomorrow this time and just keep that cycle going and that way you won't chaos and overwhelm won't come into your life because you're trying to do everything at the same time, every day, mm -hmm. and the compartmentalization of time, I think, will help stay mm -hmm. kind of relaxed with that. Definitely. And just whatever you do, do you. Mm -hmm. right. And do the best you that you can. And maybe sometimes you may start out in a particular month or a particular time of the year, and you set a goal for yourself, and you find that maybe it's a struggle, or maybe you don't want to pursue it anymore. There's nothing wrong with making a mid-course correction, changing what you're doing, finding something that maybe speaks to you a little more or better, and doing that instead. So we hope that we have shared with you some alternatives to those age-old traditions of New Year's resolutions that we're used to hearing about. Yeah. And I want to thank today Talia and Zandria and our special guest, Minister yeah. Fitz Houston. Yeah. And thank you out there for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And join us on the next edition of The Ladies Show. Make it a great day. <laughs>